In this video, I wanted to see whether I could draw like my favourite artist, Naterix. She also has a YouTube channel and you can find that link at the end of the video. The key thing about Naterix's style is that she does so much on one layer. You can see this in loads of her videos where it's just amazing to me how much she's doing and I'll look over to the layers and the time lapse and it's like, what? why aren't you on a new layer? <laughs> And it actually really helped me cut down on my layers when I'm drawing my own style because I used to do loads and loads and loads and loads. Every single change I did, it would be, okay, backed up by duplicating the layer. I would never delete that duplicate. It was a whole mess. And of course, none of them would be named. So here I'm trying to just do the sketch. And what's more, the thing that's really impressive is that the sketch will not be deleted later. Like the sketch, you know, where usually I'll, I'll do the sketch and then I'll do the line work over it. No, this time I'm just going to be doing the sketch and then on the same layer, I will just add to the sketch to do more detail. As you can see, I'm doing a Reaper from Subnautica. That's because I also wanted to do a Reaper anyway for another time lapse. And I thought, well, might as well use it for this. It really is just a matter of laying on detail over detail. And as you can see here, I've turned off the pressure sensitivity opacity because I want to get nice strong lines. I'm also doing quite a bit of erasing. Now, I watched very carefully. I had to watch a quarter speed and that sort of helped at the same time. Didn't really affect the frame rate of her video, but I tried very hard to see and she does very little with the eraser but I think she's using the same eraser as I'm using here or something similar. I did try to use the same brushes as she used, but some of them I just don't have. So here you can see that I've gotten up the main inspiration for this where she uses this style. And it, I'm really just trying to work out how she does it, how she gets that thing. Sometimes it seems like she's erasing, but if you actually look at her brush, she's actually just layering on color. So here I realized that actually before she does the coloring, she does the background usually. So I'm putting in the background, which for me, because it's Subnautica, it's just a very simple bluish sea effect. I mean, the, my main focus is the foreground here. She does do cool background stuff as well. But I thought, you know what? I, I There's not very much interesting stuff where the Reapers are in Subnautica. Uh, and it's just, it's underwater anyway, they're often quite o open expanses of water, and frankly, I kind of just wanted to focus on the, the subject here, because that's, that's where I was focusing. Here I'm just trying to block in the colour, which she kind of does. I do go a little bit off book as I go through this, because it was really difficult. I don't know how difficult I thought it was going to be, but it was harder than I expected to follow her method, because... It's so, it's not necessarily the opposite of the way I draw, but it's to the very extreme of how I draw. She's sort of my style, but more extreme, or probably more accurately, my style is, is hers, but less extreme, because to be honest, she's quite, uh, quite an inspiration to my style. It's also worth noting, and you might even be able to tell from the speed of this time lapse compared to my others, that... It, this took me much less time than most of my drawings and especially most of her drawings. I mean, she's got things that take her 10 hours, but a lot of them take her five hours. Uh, the This drawing that I'm pulling up here, that took her five hours. However, I managed to get this done in about an hour and a half, more or less. But that's not from skill from me compared to her. That's more from the lack of skill from me compared to her. So here we go. So again, doing the shading on the same layer. And I'm, I've, I've got to admit, I'm using transparency lock, which she does not use. But I tried it without. And to be honest, it was such a hassle. And I think the difference is that she's really refining her shapes. I She doesn't work within her lines. Her lines are not the same as what lines are to me and a lot of other artists. For me, the lines are the guide to the whole thing. The lines, the line drawing is what the, the shape you want it to be. And then the color is just a sprinkling over the top to make it more detailed. Likewise with the shading and everything like that. For her, no, the lines are just one component, it seems, you know, one equal slice to it. So, you know, you can just 
shape the shape and mold the lines and all of the other intricate parts however you like and it's just so interesting everything is malleable in her and that wasn't really something I was used to so whereas every stage for her another shaping stage uh, for the whole picture whereas for me <clears throat> each stage for me is trying to fill in what, what I already established with the lines so yeah, I'm using a transparency lock layer because I did not want to do it without that, so. But I'm quite happy with some of the effects that I've got, and as the drawing goes on, I definitely do go a little bit more off book. I definitely kind of improvise a bit more, and to be honest, I think you kind of have to do that because that's probably how she draws anyway, because I'm not trying to replicate her pictures, I am trying to replicate her style, so. If I'm going based off of one of her drawings using the exact same method for a different drawing, probably wouldn't work too well. So yeah, I, I kind of improvised. I used a bit of the smudge tool just to make things blend in a bit better. I will also say that some of her brushes that she uses, because I don't have access to them, I don't know what they do. They don't, they don't work. Just based off of what I've seen, they don't work in the same way that mine do so I think they actually have like some brushes I think they actually have the opacity thing built into them uh, which some things definitely do have likewise with brush sensitivity and size whereas I have to actually check the little opacity variation box next to the opacity percentage it's probably quite hard to follow if you don't know photoshop or if you're not really familiar with it I don't know so here, I really am just smoothing out a lot of this as best I can, just to make sure that it has the right kind of look to it. I've got to say, I mean, it's not as impressive as hers are, you know, this really is more of a tribute than a direct replication of the style. I'm quite happy with it. I think it's, I think it works quite well. You know, I'm using a multiply on my brush directly rather than what I'd usually do, which is put it on the layer, but... I'm quite glad I did that. And then here, I think I'm using a screen just to have the extra lighting to it, which again, I, I, I'm i glad. I, I think that looks good. And I think it it looks quite similar to how, how she does it, but she does it quite differently. The thing was in the picture that I saw, it was an Among Us fan art, which meant that she actually had quite solid colors. Like there weren't many colors that she was detailing and the colors that she was were very vibrant blue and yellow if I remember correctly so the kind of darker colors of those was easier whereas with white it's kind of harder to tell because you're either going to go with a gray which doesn't always look very nice or you're going to go with something a bit more cool with a bit of a, a, a purplish or blue tone. I went with the purplish blue tone and set it to multiply to a certain extent I kind of just had to go with what I'm used to. Now here I'm just trying to add like a little bit of particle effects in the foreground. I spent quite a bit of time messing around with this as it happens. I'm not really sure why. I was trying to go with something quite similar to the particle effects that I had in the Marketh picture. Uh, you can see that I'm messing around with the curves. Uh, my curves are actually on the other display that I've got, but you can actually see on the little preview the general shape that I'm going with. So there you go, add a bit of a blur to it. And then, ah uh, yeah, so then I, I duplicated that. I added a, a Gaussian blur to the top one and then I just erased it. If I had thought this through properly, I would have done something with a layer mask, but I, I, I'm not very familiar with those. Uh, here, this is actually a layer mask, so that, that was good. And then I could just kind of put in these light beam things that Maybe I'm underwater, probably not, I don't know. Uh, I'll try a little bit of detailing at the end because I felt like it wasn't quite enough for the Natrix style, but that's pretty much it. This was quite an interesting experience for me because my art is already so inspired by Natrix. I really thought it would be easier than it was, but it was surprisingly difficult. Something I want to do is I want to do really really big artwork. I want to do a really big 10 hour piece sort of thing. 
because I like the maximum I've ever gotten to is nearly five hours, and I <laughs> I don't know whether the, this seems a little, maybe a little bit odd, but I just I want something that takes that amount of time. I want something that takes that amount of work because generally the more work I put into it, the happier I am with it because I I I'm or I'm fairly proud of my artworks most of the time. So the more effort I put into it, the more proud I am of it. So I'd love to be able to put loads of time into it. But I, it gets to a point with some of these things, like this one. Like, I realized, I checked my recording uh, uh, software and it was like, oh, I've only been drawing for an hour and a half. But there's really nothing else I can do. So I tried to add in a bit of extra detail at the end, didn't really work out. So I thought, well, guess that's it. But a lot of the time comes in with the background and then subsequently like all the lighting in the background and things like that. I mean, you can see this actually in the drawings that take me quite a while. The exception to this is rubber hose on my channel. I, to this day, don't know why that is the longest. I think that is the longest time lapse on my channel. And I have no clue why, because I look at that and I think, did that take me nearly five hours? But Fair Roof of the Forest is also one of the longer ones, and that one is mostly background. You can, so, yeah. A lot of it just comes in detailing the background because it's just a lot more complicated shapes in the background than your subject in general. So, I, I quite enjoyed this. Let me know if there are any artists that you want to see me replicate, because this was fun. This was interesting. It was difficult, but I, I think it's the sort of thing that you get better at with practice. And I'd be curious to see, because when you emulate other people's artworks, you learn things from them. That's really the greatest improvements in my artwork has been when I've replicated somebody else's, like drawing Bruce Wayne or drawing this Yeti that someone did. You know, it, it helps you learn the techniques that they themselves used, even if you don't know what techniques they were. In this situation, I know some of them that Natrix did. So let me know what, uh, what artist is your favourite artist, and maybe I'll replicate it in a future video. Uh, that's all for now. I don't have an outro.